G'day welcome to pay it forward now I don't know about all of you but I'm really at a busy time of the year and I think we all need a pattern that is really quick and easy and uh, it just makes us happy so a little burst of color and uh, so I have created a little shelf sitter there's going to be a few of these for all of you who have been asking for farm animals and uh, particularly cows here she is little miss cow and she's absolutely delightful to make she serves no purpose whatsoever except to bring people joy so that's exactly what we need right now so she has a free pattern all you need to do is click on that link in the description below if you're not on a mobile device you need to click on that little gray arrow in the corner there that will open up the description box for you and you'll find that link then when you go to print out your pattern templates make sure that you set your printer to print at actual size so that it doesn't resize your pattern templates because we need them to be absolutely spot on because now we've got to get busy sewing. Right, so let's get started and I will show you what you need to make up our little cow. Now, first up, his little body is made up of just fabric. So I just choose a, a very bold black and white print. Um, I'm going for the little black and white and pink colors for my little cow. Of course, you can make him in any colors you like. Definitely the little liver and white would look really nice. But I think probably the black and white is instantly recognizable as, as cow. So I've just taken a very busy, bold black and white print and I have added my visible woven cotton interfacing on the back. And you do need to interface this one it needs to be quite strong and then you're going to need a little uh, base cover for the bottom of our little cow and you're going to need a little base disc because he needs to sit stand up nice and firm there we're going to pull in around this little disc now I've just cut mine it's actually a 55 millimeter disc if you have a wooden disc that size um, if not, just cut it from some very firm cardboard. I'm using matte board, which is picture framing matte board. I actually just made friends with my local picture framer and he keeps all his little off cuts for me. So it's very, very strong. And I cut two pieces and I actually glued them together just with white glue, with PVA glue. So that's nice and strong. We've got one of those. And then for our little head pieces, it's a little collection of pieces here in felt. Now it does work best in felt, this little guy. So let me just move everything off there. So we've got our front and back head pieces and we're going to be adding to the front of that. Now the back of the head is, I've cut it in the cream and these have the same interfacing applied. Now this first face piece I cut in white and the reason for that is we're going to be layering his other pieces over it so that one is white and we've got our little ear pieces and they have fusible webbing or heat and bond on the back of them we're going to be pressing those on first and then our next step will be to add our little the top of the head and the mask which gives us our eyes now I'm going to be showing you a different little method of stitching our blanket applique stitching today I'm a bit excited about showing you that it's kind of a reverse style um, and it allows us to outline little eye circles so when you're cutting this piece out and and definitely all of these little pieces they need to be quite precise so I've got a video that talks to you about cutting and layout and gives you some really helpful tips so I'm going to put that little link up there you can check that out but you do need to cut out those little holes it's very easy to do because you've got your paper on the back so it's very easy to mark it out just take your time and use your little scissors to cut out those little circles it gives us a real three-dimensional look um, to be able to have the eyes recessed like that and of course that gives us the white behind which is what we're after because we're going to be adding in our little eye buttons and they're going to sit in nicely in that uh, little indentation there and we can make him quite expressive um, once we've put it all together so this piece has your heat and bond so does the little mouthpiece which will then go over the top and cover there and then we've got our little nostril pieces they also have heat and bond on them we're going to be stitching the little mouth line in now for the top of his head 
there's two ways you can go about this. He has a little patch at the top of his head that just adds a lovely little bit of detail there. I'm going with the black felt to really coordinate with my colours. You can alternatively just cut from your print and you can have a little patterned piece there. Totally depends on what you're, what, uh, what you like. Um, I'm actually going to go for the just the plain black this time because I really want that to stand out. So that will be my little piece there. And also, if you happen to have or can find some little heart buttons like I have here, they make great little horns, tiny sweet little horns at the top. We saw those on last and it's just a very sweet little look. So also for the front of our little cow, we're going to add a little embellishment. You can put as much or as little on this little cow's body. I'm just going to be adding a little necklace pendant neckline and I'm going to be adding my one little bell hanging from that. Um, you can of course, you could applique anything on the front of this little cow before, you, before we put him together. Um, and you'll also need a button, a fairly decent sized button for uh, joining the head to the body. And we also need a filler piece that goes in between these layers. And I've cut that one from um, stiffened felt. Um, and you usually can find stiffened felt absolutely everywhere in your craft stores. If you can't, just cut yourself another piece of plain felt and that will give, just needs a bit more substance in that head. And you're going to need your extra strong threads. I'm using mine as embroidery threads for throughout this little project. And also I will be using a pearl thread for around the whole outside. There's a bit of hand stitching in this one, but it makes this little face really pop. So it's really worth doing. So you'll need some clear craft glue as well. And that is your, your glue that's suitable for fabric and it needs to be quite quick drying and um, a nice gel consistency. So just make sure on your label that it says that it is suitable for fabric. Um, I am going to be filling with polyester filling, um, but I am going to be adding a little bit of weight. So I'm gonna just use some white, some raw white rice there, just to add a bit of filling. You could add some aquari fine aquarium gravel, perhaps you've got um, plastic toy pellets, they could go in there too, or, or perhaps you don't want to weight it at all. I just think they sit a little better with that little bit of weight in them. So well, let's just move all this out of the way, and of course you need your two little buttons. Tiny little buttons are best. Okay, so we're gonna move all of this out of the way. So we're gonna start with our first little step. And our first step is I've taken one of my pieces that's going to be my front. You'll see on your pattern templates that you've got a little mark there that shows you the center mark there at the front. And that's where our little, and you've got your side marks too that show you where, exactly where your little braid needs to go in. And I'm simply going to stitch that one in place ready and I will pull a thread through to be able to tie my little bell on later. So that's your first step. So if you're using Rick Rack like I am, it's an easy enough to stitch down there, pull that one up that side and stitch that on with the machine. Again, there's so many different things you could use for this little section here. You might not want a, a necklace at all. You may want to do um, you know, a, a pretty bold flower, perhaps a big daisy on his belly, um, whatever you think would be nice. Um, I'm sure you'll have some great ideas. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch my Rick Rack in place first. So there you can see I've got my little um, Rick Rack braid in place there. And then I have just gone ahead and threaded my needle with my thicker pearl thread. And I have a knot in the big knot in the end and come through the front there with a double strand. So that one's ready there for when my little cow is finished, I'm going to be able to tie on my little bell or any other trinket that you would like to add there. So that's already done nicely in place. So now all we need to do is line up our front and back body pieces together and make sure that your edges are all met up. And it is a four millimeter seam allowance throughout this little project. And just make sure that all of your edges meet up. And we're just going to sew from that bottom edge, make sure you back and forth when you start. And we're gonna go right around the top, 
right down to the base there back and forth and I sew that seam two times so it's nice and strong. So you can see there that's got my little seam sewn twice so now all I need to do is turn that one through and just remember that any work you want to do on the front of your little cow um, you do that all before you sew up those those body seams it's just much easier to do that work when it's nice and flat so I've just pushed those seams out and I will go ahead and roll those out and we have our basic little body these are so quick and easy to make and they really are just such a beautiful little gift to give for uh, you know for somebody perhaps who pop it on their office desk or line them up along the windowsill they're really quite fabulous there we go so we've got that one ready and now all we need to do is start filling so we start filling with our polyester filling and we fill out this top section now this section here is where the button is going to be sitting on the back from behind and we'll be joining that little head on that way so we want that to be packed nice and firm and so all the way down I'm going to fill till about halfway and then I will just add a couple of cups of rice in there then I will top up with that final bit of filling and pack that all in now you can use your wool felting needle if you like to pack everything in you do want these little bodies to be nice and firm um, and then just you want to finish up leaving yourself just a little way from the edge so that we can pull that one in and I'll show you how to do that right so there you can see I've got my little body all nicely filled out there it's nice and firm filled it about halfway added a little bit of rice and topped up with my filling and then I used my wool felting needle just to pack that in all nice and flat so that that's ready for my little disc to go in now then I've taken my needle and I have thread it with a double thread of my extra strong thread and you can see that I've just sewn a little running stitch all around the outside edge just about half a centimeter in and come up to the end left my tail ends hanging and just tied my first knot there ready so all we need to do is slip our little disc in and as we do this is going to compress everything down nicely as well and make our little body nice and firm so it's really just a matter of tying those ends now it doesn't need to go all the way to the center because we are covering this with a little disc base as well our little felt disc base so I'll pull that into about this far and then I will knot that one off at least four times and you can see that that's pulled that one in nicely and that one sits up beautifully nice and firm and ready for its little base so I have just taken my clear craft glue and liberally coated that little felt base that's felt with interfacing applied and we're just going to pop that on the bottom just make sure it's all nicely centered And we're just going to press it into place it just gives it a lovely finish we're going to give it a little blanket applique stitch all the way around which will settle it into place it just gives it a really nice professional little finish just make sure all of those edges are pushed down and we're just going to set that one aside to dry my little uh, base disc is dry now so we can go ahead and stitch our blanket applique stitch around this one now I'm using pearl thread it's only an eight ply so it's a fairly fine one and I've just put it's a single strand and I've got a knot in the end and I've just gone in at the base here and just tucked that little knot in underneath so that one will be nicely hidden there and I've come out right on the edge on the fabric so my first stitch I'm just going to dive into my felt and I want to take up some of that fabric on the underneath now a blanket applique stitch is uh, it's usually done flat but in this case we're doing it just on this little 3d section 
um, I've got a video that shows you how to sew a blanket applique stitch. I'm going to put that link up there because we're going to need that one later for you. So that's my first stitch anchored in and now all I need to do is just follow that little circle line around each time going through both of those layers and making sure that I'm coming out and taking up some of that fabric because that's going to pull that little disc onto that fabric and we're going to get a nice neat little line and it just gives that it's important to do these little finishing things that especially if you're selling these at markets this particular project is absolutely fabulous for selling at markets or selling online and you want just that little bit of a extra finish on your products so that um, you can feel really proud of them so you can see there that's going to make and of course you can use any color you like something coordinating or something contrasting it's entirely up to you so I'm going to make my way right the way around that little circle so that has our little base disc all stitched in nicely we can pop that little body aside now that one is all ready to go so we're going to move ahead and starting work on our little cow face now this, the first step that I've done is I have removed my backing papers from my little ear pieces, press those on and this is the only section on this little cow's face that I machine stitch. The rest I do by hand but I do like the clean line this machine stitch gives to those inner ears. We are going to be stitching around the outside edge here so remember to leave that space. So make sure when you're positioning them that you've got a nice clear space around each and they will extend down a little um, and I've just sewn a very close straight stitch there on the machine and I now my next piece to go on will slightly overlap the base of those ears which is why we do it in this order so we've got our little it looks like a little ghost doesn't it um, we're just going to pop that one on there you know you find that one will line up beautifully there with the top of the head and it will just cover the tops of those little ears there and there's going to be a stitch going around there as well so we're going to press that one carefully into place with a hot iron and protective cloth and once you've done that you can then go ahead and press on your little top patch there right over the top of it so do them one at a time I never recommend doing multiple pieces at once because things do move under your ironing cloth so pop them on in that order and then we will come back and we will start our stitching so I'm getting up to that top curve there and you've noticed my stitches are all the same and of course I did mention I'm using black for a very good reason what we're actually doing with this little project was really outlining all of our little pattern pieces so we do need it to be black or at least a very dark color but I think that black works best um, unless of course you're using very different colors and then you might want to use just a very dark version of what your what your whole project is so I've designed this in this way so that I can create little eyelashes because we all know that cows have lovely long eyelashes and I can now start extending my stitches out as I go just a little bit at a time to give us that lovely lash that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to do not in this neat way anyway Mr Frog is back do you hear that? That's my resident frog. He lives in my air conditioner and he's very, very cross that I've just turned it off. He's very loud. So you can see there I've made one long stitch. Thank you, Mr. Frog. I've made one long stitch and I'm going to continue to create those stitches being just that little bit longer as I go up over that section notice that I'm also rotating my work as I go so that those stitches are fanning out because if we don't rotate our work what happens is our stitches end up leaning in the direction that we're sewing so you've got to keep turning it so I've got three there now that are longer 
can see I'm going to make my way around to about the same on the other side with those nice long stitches. So there you can see I've continued on with those longer stitches and then brought that stitch size right back down again. Make sure that you do bring that stitch back down because that really shows the difference between those top stitches and the bottom ones. And you can see, I mean, we can make it look quite fabulous. Look at those fabulous lashes. And also once we put that little eye in, that little button, it's just so animated. So it's, it's just a good little um, different way of doing your little eyes. You try it on your little doll's eyes and that it's, it's really a lovely, effective little stitch. So I'm going to continue on and make my way back around and link up here. And then I'm going to repeat the same process with the other eye. Just make sure that whatever you did on this one, you mirror it on this one. And there we've got our finished little eye circles. You can see just how effective that is. So and then I've gone ahead and sewn that same little stitch around my little top, head, top of the head patch. So that's all done. You can go ahead and add your little eyes now. Now these little uh, shelf sitters, I actually called them... I had a whole range of them and I called them button heads. It's very creative of me. <laughs> but anyway, I guess it described what they were because they were just simple and uh, the head is joined with a button. And I actually base them on the little faces on, I don't know if any of you know those vintage dolls called Googlies. A very, very animated little doll and they've got a very sweet little face. So positioning those little buttons for the eyes. I always put them in the top right hand corner. You can make them side glance the other way. So they're a little side glancing eye and because the little button head has a very rotating head once it's on the body, they're just the sweetest little characters when you can tilt them and they've got that really expressive look. So that's why I do that. But in saying that, this is your project. So you could put them smack bang in the middle for a very startled cow, you could put them the other side, you could put them looking down, whatever you like, whatever makes you happy. So mine will put, be put in that usual side glancing position. So you can go ahead and sew those on and then our next step will be to add our next pieces. You'll see that little muzzle piece will line up exactly there and it will just cover that top section there. So we're going to press that one on into place and then your little nostril pieces. Now they sit either side, little points facing in and your most obvious curve at the top. Make sure again that you're leaving room for your stitching. We're going to be stitching all the way around. Make sure these bottom points are lined up and then you'll want to press those into place. We're going to be adding a little stitch mouth in here. So once you've got those all pressed into place, we're going to again stitch around the outside of each of those nostril pieces using that same stitch and I'm still using black. So that's really going to mark out those little edges and I'm also going to stitch just this top line, not this outer edge at all, just this top line of that little muzzle piece and again I'm going to be using black. Okay so that's got our little nostril pieces on and we've got our little eyes in place and that little top line there. You see I've left the edge uh, not stitched for now. Now I've just added my little uh, smile. So my little shy cow smile. The way I've done that is I've just used a large cotton spool and I've just popped that right in the center there and I'll use my very fine marker because I'm going to be sewing over that in black and just marked in just lightly there that little smile you can do I guess you can do any style that you like but I just think that's just a sweet little look and I've got my pearl thread and it's an eight ply this time I'm using pearl thread here just because it's a little thicker I want this mouth line to show up. So I've got a single strand and a knot in the end and I'm going to come out right on the edge there of my little start of my smile and I'm simply going to sew a linked back stitch 
following that line exactly. It's my first stitch in, then I come back through a little way along, just the length of a stitch. And I'm going to go back into that same hole so that our little mouth line is all linked up. You can see there, a little bit further along. You've noticed too with this face that throughout this, this project I've kept my stitches nice and small because when we're outlining in black it's just an outline so we don't want if we take our stitches much longer it will end up not outlining but completely overpowering those little colors and shapes so keep them nice and small and even and it also makes it look very very detailed and professional so you can see there I'm going to have a nice little mouth line little smile I'm just going to follow that line all the way up to the other side so that has our little face all complete it's very exciting to see her come together and so our next step is to we're going to put all of our face layers together now there's no filling in these little button heads I try and keep them nice and flat reason for that is they're very very easy and quick to make but also um, we can do a lot more with the animated stitching and also that little head is beautifully tilted on the little body when it's all together so if you're using for your filler if you're using a stiffened felt like I am here before I put my stiffened felt on so this is our back head piece I add a little circle of felt an extra little circle of felt and 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 uh, glue that one into place first just right in the center of the head just because that's going to give my needle something to grab onto when we join the head to the body only with stiffened felt if you're using just a, an extra piece of interface felt for your filler which a lot of you might be going to do you don't need to do that because the the uh, that piece will take a needle just fine so you can see I've glued up with my clear craft glue again and I've glued up that little filler piece and we're just going to line it all up right in the center now I think stiffened felt definitely works better for these little button heads because it just gives those little heads a, a real crisp finish um, and it is readily available and I think there are ways to stiffen your felt yourself self if you're interested in uh, learning about that there's definitely a lot of little tutorials online that you can look at I think it's a pretty simple process I can get mine readily available so um, I'm lucky so we just press that one down and then we're just going to make sure you get those all pushed in and then we're going to glue up again this whole back section making sure we're getting those edges as well ready for our front face piece and once that's all glued up we just go ahead and lay our front face piece on top and it's just a matter of lining it all up Remember we're going to be sewing around the entire outside of that little head. Pressing it all down. You can even put little clips around the edges if you want to. I just find those edges will adhere just fine. So we're going to pop that one aside once it's all pressed into place and we're going to let it dry probably about 15 to 20 minutes. So now my little face is all dry and you can see just how solid that little head is. I've got my pearl thread, um, my eight ply again, and I, I have it on a single strand. And now we're going to do our final sewing. Now where we're going to be sewing is around the entire outside of that little face shape. We're going to be sewing a blanket stitch. And as we start our blanket stitch, we go on as usual. When we get to here, we're going to continue on around this curve but we'll change our stitch to a blanket applique as we go over this little ear section change back to a blanket stitch and just change back to that blanket applique stitch to there again make our way all the way around now I have got a video that shows you how to sew a blanket stitch I'll put that link up there for you um, now I've come in from behind with a knot in the end of my thread and I've just come in through that felt 
I want to hide that knot so I'm going to take my awl and just increase the size of that little hole so that I can pop that knot into those fibres. Sometimes you've got to juggle it a little bit to get, make, create a little pocket in the felt. It's just a way to usually pop that in and it's not cooperating. There it is. Okay, so, and then we can cover those fibres over that little knot there. So that little knot is pulled through. So, and you'll, I'm going to do the face section first as I described, and then I'm going to do the ears separately. Because we do like to have that little stitching line across here that defines the top of the head. Using black again, of course, because that's the theme of the whole little project. And I'm not going to make my stitches too deep. So I want to keep with that idea of just, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Frog is back, outlining that little face shape. So I'm going to have to compete with him. So I can't kick him out because there's a beautiful protected species, a, a green tree frog we have in Australia and he's very big and he's adorable. So he's here to stay. We'll have to name him, won't we? So I've just gone through both those layers and back out through the loop there. So you can see through both of those layers, bring my needle out through the loop and that gives me that nice little tight little binding that will bind those edges together right the way around. So as I said, as we get to here, we're just going to change it to a blanket applique stitch, which is really simple because they're a very similar stitch. It's just that we won't be going all the way through. So now I'm right on that edge. I'm going to take my needle in. and come out on the edge of that little shape, that little top of that head curve. Mind my little cow's ears. And that's now changed to a blanket applique stitch. So I continue across there just coming out right on that edge. And you can see I'll travel across with the blanket applique stitch to here, then change back to a blanket stitch and do the same across this, this ear. So you can make your way around that entire little head shape and then just do the ears with your blanket stitch separately. So there we go, that's our little face all finished and I've added my little, uh, if you have your little heart horns, you can stitch them on there. You can see just either side of the ears there. So now we're all ready to attach it to our little body and we're going to do that. We're going to need a nice big button and I have made a little mark on the back of mine. The spot that seems to suit best this little one is about four centimeters from the base of the chin there so if you want to put a little mark across right in the center there that's where we're going to be taking our stitch so we're going to be starting with the back of the body so at the top of the neck here and we're going to be i've got my i have taken a double thread through my needle. I'm using a doll needle. A normal needle will probably pass through here okay. It's just easier with a doll needle. Um, I've taken my extra strong thread and I have two strands taken through it so I've actually got four strands going through. So I'm going to go through. We only use two holes but it doesn't matter if you've got a four hole button like I have here. And the, coming in at the back so you want to just really center that little button 
just with a little bit of space around it so right in the center of that top area there so I'm going to take my needle through make sure you're coming out level as you come out the front don't be coming in at an angle so you want to come through the center there take that thread through and then we've got our little head so we're going to take a big bite out of the back of that head, head and remember that we added that little bit of that little circle of felt so we're able to dive into there and I'm just traveling across a little and then I'm going to go back in I'm just holding my button at the back here so I'm going to go back in just a little way from where I did I want to come out at the back of the head and through my other buttonhole. So if we pull that all up, make sure your threads are nice and taut. You can check on your little cow's head position there and you can see there we've got that nice little tilt he's sitting just about right so I think four centimeters from the base seems to work really well and it still leaves room for us to see his little neckline there so you can see that's nicely pulled in and it also sits because this is flat it sits on such a lovely little angle for this shelf sitter so all we need to do is just tie that one off about four times and you can lose your thread ends into your little body or you can just snip them off it's entirely up to you so I'm going to tie that one off and then we have our finished little beautiful little shelf sitter cow you see I've added her little bell there and uh, you can add anything there I'm sure you're going to be all over that uh, with your little trims and so on so you see that we get that lovely flat finish that's because we've taken that little button and we've taken that little bite out of only the backing of that head not all the way through so we keep that lovely beautiful little flat surface she's got a gorgeous little head tilt going on there um, and I really encourage you to bring your own um, ideas to this this little project there's going to be so many more of these and uh, you can let me tell you the key points with this one to, to give you success every time Remember to keep the, your, your felt areas and your head, keep those felt to keep a lighter color underneath the eyes there. Remember why we put the white there because that shows up and, and keep your stitching dark for your outlining. And if you team up this little patch and what's on the body, you can basically use any colors at all. Of course we can have purple cows and orange cows and polka dot cows and all sorts so if you follow those basic rules you can break the rules with the rest of it and and make them in all sorts of colors and I do want you to put your own stamp on them I definitely encourage you to trust your own decisions your own uh, color choices trust yourself because remember you is kind you is smart and you is important so I hope you've had a good time making my little cow. Well, thank you all for joining me today. So how did you go with this one? What do you think about the little concept, the little flat face and the little very animated design there? You let me know what you think of those because I have literally hundreds of these that I can offer you. Now they're going to be different in all sorts of ways. This one is so very simple. I, I thought that we all needed that at the moment. Um, but there are going to be others that have quite a bit of detail in them. Some even have little arms and legs and little body parts and so on. But they're all very simple in their design, all featuring this little flat little button head that just works so well. So talk to me in the comments. Tell me if you like the idea of it. Are you following me on Instagram? I hope you are because I love to hear from you, see what you're making. Make sure that you check out uh, my stories because you often see little sneaky peeks of uh, the next pattern coming up so you can be well ahead of the game. You can be already equipped for when they come up. Um, so I hope you're enjoying it all. 
so there's going to be a few of these moving forward let me think about what I'm going to be doing so in this little series there will definitely be a giraffe uh, there is going to be um, possibly a llama um, there's so many really they're all spinning around up there but they'll all definitely jump out so make sure that you subscribe please if you haven't subscribed please do so because that's the best way to catch up on all of the patterns and collect you can collect all of my free patterns and have them stashed there ready you can create a lovely great big work folder so I hope you're enjoying it all thank you all so much for your support lovely to hear from you everybody stay safe please and make sure every time something good comes to you in your day don't just keep it for yourself make sure that you pay it forward until next time it's Huru from me